Okay, so now on to multiplication of polynomials with several variables. And the key word again is distribution, because that's basically what we do term by term. So nothing should, ch nothing should change if we have more variables. So looking at my first example, I'm taking a monomial, 2xy, and I'm multiplying it to a trinomial. So again, distribution-wise, we're basically going to distribute that all the way through. And so 2 times 3 would give us 6. We have an x and an x squared. I have an x cubed. And then we've got a y. So that would be the product of the first two. The subtraction, and then we have a 2 times 1, which is 2. An x times an x, which is an x squared. A y times a y, which is a y squared. So we've exhausted that one. And then last but not least, I have a 2 times 4 is 8. There's just an x y times y squared would give us y cubed. And so basically, I'm doing the same thing we did, right, when we were multiplying polynomials with just one variable. You just basically distribute, multiply the coefficients, and then basically use your product rule for your exponents with regard to same base. All right? Uh, trying to get a little harder, we got 2x minus y times 3x plus 4y. It's a binomial. So we're basically using our FOIL or our term by term. So when I do my first terms, I get a 6x squared. When I do my outer terms, I get a positive 8xy. When I do my inner terms, I get a negative 3 commutative property, right, xy. And then doing my last, a negative times a positive is a negative, and we get 4y squared. So essentially just our similar distribution, term by term, FOIL, whatever you want to call it, process. We're just tracking one more variable. Uh, looking at like terms, right, these are the only two terms that are like. They both have x, y in it. So we have a 6x squared. We have 8, we subtract 3, so we have 5xy, and then minus 4y squared. So we're all said, and we're all done. So again, just multiplication, same stuff we've been doing. We just have another variable to track. Uh, looking at my next one, uh, I'm seeing a pattern right away. I have a binomial times a binomial. I have an addition and a subtraction, and I have the same terms. So the way I'm going to choose to do this is use my difference of squares pattern. Of course, if you don't want to use the difference of squares pattern, go ahead and FOIL it out. But if we use the difference of squares, it's the first term squared plus the last term squared. Oops. Minus. It's difference of squares, right? So difference of squares. So we get x squared. Uh, here we have a power of a product. So we get x squared minus 9y squared. And again, if you don't trust the formula, go ahead and FOIL it out and see that the outer and the inner cancel. And you're left with what I got, x squared minus 9y squared, difference of squares. So those, those patterns still hold true with polynomials with several variables. If you have the pattern, you have the pattern. So number four, uh, what I'm doing is taking a difference and squaring it. So we know that to be 2x minus 5y times 2x minus 5y. So you can either FOIL that out, all right, or you can use the perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to choose to use that. So what happened in a perfect square trinomial? Well, we took the first term and we squared it. We took the second term and we squared it. We're subtracting, so I'm going to subtract two times. I'm going to go ahead and write it this way, their product. All right, so the product of the two things. We double up the outer and the inner. And so cleaning this up, here's a 4x squared minus, if we multiplied this out, 2 times 2 is 4 times 5 is 20xy, oops, I think I mistake, mistakenly wrote that, and then 5y squared would give us 25y squared. And so there's basically our perfect square trinomial, so we can even use that. Of course, if you'd rather, you can just FOIL it out and get the same exact thing. So trying to make this harder, I now have a binomial times a trinomial. So FOIL is no longer in play, but we definitely still have our term by term multiplication. So multiplying through by x, I get uh, 2x cubed plus an x squared y plus a 3xy squared, right? So x times x squared is 2x cubed 
x times x is x squared and y. There's no x here, so 3xy squared. Coming back through and doing the same thing with my y, we get a positive 2x squared y. We get a positive xy squared. And then last but not least, we get a plus 3y cubed. So there's our term by term multiplication. Now we get to collect some like terms. So our highest degree, as a matter of fact, they're all degree 3. And so going in descending order for x, 2x cubed will start the game. As far as x squared is concerned, there's an x squared y. And here's 2x squared y. So we have a combined total of 3x squared y. Continuing, right, we have degree 3, degree 2 in terms of x, so degree 1. So there's a degree 1. And there's a degree 1, right? And they also happen to be y squared. So 3 and 1, we have a combined total of 4xy squared. And then this is the only term with a y cubed in it. So you'll notice that idea that we're descending in order in terms of x, and we're ascending in order in terms of y. 3, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. Combined all my like terms, did all my term by term multiplication, and that is how you multiply polynomials with several variables. You just continue to play the same distribution trick. So that wraps up uh, section 4.7 with regards to working with polynomials of several variables. See you guys in our last section.